In this SoundBytes module, we'll discuss how we can improve patient safety through a concept known as a central line bundle. Now, the central line bundle is a six-step checklist of initiatives that can decrease both the infectious and mechanical complications of central line placement. Let's begin this module by going over some of the potential patient benefits of central venous access. Central venous access allows more secure vascular access in our sickest patients and gives us the ability to deliver high flow infusions in these patients. Central venous access is also a safer administration route of vasopressors as opposed to the peripheral route. A central line allows for better hemodynamic monitoring of our patients, allowing you to monitor central venous pressure or CVP and also mixed venous oxygen saturation. However, there are some serious patient risks involved with placement of a central venous catheter. The two main groups of complications are the mechanical and the infectious. Those included under mechanical complications are pneumothorax formation, hemothorax formation, and inadvertent arterial puncture with hematoma formation. The second main category are the infectious complications and central line associated bloodstream infections are increasingly recognized cause of increased morbidity and mortality in our sickest patients. Because of these recognized complications of central line placement, bedside ultrasound has stepped up to help us lower the complication rate. Bedside ultrasound dramatically decreases the mechanical complications of central line placement, allowing real-time guidance of the cannulating needle into the central vein. Bedside ultrasound is now recommended by governmental agencies and multiple medical societies as an aid in placement of central lines. And over recent years, there's been increasing momentum in initiatives to decrease central line associated infections. Two major initiatives were the IHI 100,000 Lives campaign, which came out in 2005 with the aim to improve patient safety in all USA hospitals. Also in 2006, the Joint Commission's, JCO, came out with the six national safety goals, also with the aim of reducing risk of healthcare-associated infections. The Institute for Healthcare Improvement, or IHI, recommendations for central venous access include five major initiatives. The first is increasing attention to hand hygiene. Number two, adequate skin antisepsis. Number three, maximal barrier precautions. Number four, catheter site selection, and number five, daily review of the need for a central line. If one adds ultrasound guidance of line placement to the five-point IHI recommendations of hand hygiene, skin antisepsis, maximal barrier precautions, catheter site selection, and daily review of the need for central line, one gets to the central line six-point bundle, the current standard for decreasing complications of central line placement. Before performing central venous access, it's mandatory to perform a checklist prior to the procedure to decrease the complication rate. The first thing one should do is to review the patient charts for those increased procedural risks to our patients, such as a coagulopathy, thrombocytopenia, the presence of a DVT within the upper extremity or lower extremity veins, or a known latex allergy. One should obtain informed consent from our patients, also performing a pre-scan ultrasound to look for clot in the targeted veins. Last but not least, it's optimal and mandatory to perform a timeout procedure together with the nursing staff. Going through the IHI guidelines for decreasing the complication rate for central venous access, the first step is to wash your hands thoroughly prior to the procedure. As an alternative, one can consider application of alcohol-based waterless hand cleansers, which offer additional disinfection benefit over conventional washing. The second step for decreasing the complication rate of central venous access is adequate attention to skin antisepsis. For this initiative, chlorhexidine is going to be optimal. Chlorhexidine offers benefits over traditional povidine iodine with regard to skin antisepsis, and it's best to scrub the chlorhexidine sponge vigorously across your patient's skin for 20 seconds, applying three chlorhexidine scrubs sequentially to a wide field area over the patient's skin. The third step is adequate attention to maximal barrier precautions during the central venous placement procedure. The operator and all assistants should wear a cap, mask, sterile gown, and sterile gloves throughout the procedure. It's important to place a wide field barrier over the patient during the procedure to decrease the infectious risk to our patient. The patient should be covered from head to toe with this wide field barrier with only a small opening for the insertion site of the central line. 
The fourth main step within the IHI guidelines is adequate attention to site selection for placement of a central venous catheter. In general, high lines are preferred. The internal jugular vein and subclavian vein are associated with a decreased risk of infectious complications to our patients. In general, low lines are less preferred as placement of a catheter into the ephemeral vein is associated with a higher risk of infection and also a higher risk of DVT in our patients. Critical actions following placement of a central venous catheter include using sterile technique to flush all lines of the catheter and then putting sterile catheter caps on all lumens. We'll then place a sterile dressing, like the tegaderm shown in the picture to the upper right, over the access site and obtain a chest radiograph after all high lines to look for placement of the tip of the catheter and also to rule out a pneumothorax. An optimal approach to facilitate compliance with the central line bundle is to create a dedicated central line bundle cart that moves to the patient during the actual procedure. On this dedicated central line bundle cart can be included all the supplies essential to central venous access to facilitate easy compliance with the steps. In the cart can be included the chlorhexidine swabs, all the sterile barrier supplies for the operator such as the cap gown and sterile gloves, the wide field barrier for our patient, sterile caps to go on to the central venous catheter, and the dressing cover, the tegaderm, to cover the site after the procedure is completed. One should also have the ultrasound probe sterile sheath cover to facilitate the use of ultrasound in a sterile manner during the procedure. A crucial step that's more relevant for the critical care units is a daily review of all central venous lines to see if the line is truly needed. All unessential lines should be immediately removed from the patient if not essential for optimal patient care to decrease the risk of infections to our patients. So in conclusion, the central venous access six-point bundle can potentially decrease the complication rate for our patients undergoing this procedure. Remember that we get to the six-point bundle by adding ultrasound guidance of line placement to the IHI five-point recommendations as shown below. Hand hygiene, skin antisepsis, maximal barrier precautions, catheter site selection, going for those high lines over the low lines, and a daily review of the need for a central line. Through adherence to the central venous access six-point bundle, we can potentially make the central venous access procedure a safer one for our patients. Remember that number one, we can potentially lower the rate of mechanical complications by using ultrasound guidance throughout the procedure. And number two, we can potentially lower the rate of infectious complications of the procedure by close adherence to the IHI guidelines. In conclusion, hopefully we can make hospitalization a potentially safer experience for the most ill of our patients who are receiving central venous access for their treatments. So I hope to see you back in the future as Soundbites continues.